Welcome, everyone. We're just going to get started. Um, so I'm really glad to see all of you here. The um, Frank Radji Further Fund um, is what you're here to hear about. Just make sure you're in the right room. Awesome. Um, so the Frank Radji Further Fund is a grant program to support creative arts research at Carnegie Mellon University, administered by us here at the studio. Um, my name is Nika Ross. I am the director here. I use they/them pronouns, and this is Harrison Apple. Hi, also they/them pronouns. I'm the associate director of the studio. Great. And so um, Harrison is someone you should pay attention to for the Frank Gracie Further Fund because they are your number one point of contact. Um, so, what is the studio? Uh, first of all, it's here where you are, unless you're on Zoom. Um, it is the Frank Ratchie Studio for Creative Inquiry at Carnegie Mellon University is the central research laboratory of the CMU College of Fine Arts, dedicated since 1989 to the support of atypical, anti-disciplinary, and inter-institutional inter research at the intersections of the arts, science, technology, and culture. The Frank Ratchie Further Fund, given to us as a gift from Ed Frank and Sarah Ratchie, um, was endowed in 2013 and administered by the studio. It is named in the honor of our benefactors, who you can see right there. So what is the Further Fund? The Further Fund is an endowment to encourage the creation of innovative arts research by the faculty, staff, and students of Carnegie Mellon University. With this fund, the studio seeks to support innovative projects created at CMU, works that can be described as thinking at the edges of the intersection of disciplines. The FERF supports approximately 50 grants per year. Really, that's an approximation, um, totaling around $50,000 um, distributed every year. So who is eligible? Um, primary, primary investigators, PIs, um, is the is what we'll call them must be actively affiliated with CMU so actively here working studying um, faculty PIs may be of any type tenure teaching adjunct or instructional faculty special faculty visiting faculty etc student PIs must be currently enrolled in a degree granting program at CMU and in good academic standing, not on probation, leave of absence or suspension. Staff are eligible. So, so are project scientists, research staff, visiting scholars, postdoc researchers, et cetera, from any CMU department. This isn't CFA specific. Um, more unusual entities are also eligible collaborations, teams, clubs, student organizations, faculty on behalf of a class, entire departments, um, visiting artists here and there. Uh, basically, the, you, you have to be actively affiliated with the university. Um, alumni cannot be PIs unless they are actively affiliated with CMU. So that's just something to consider when you're on a trajectory towards graduation. You have to be actively affiliated to to you get this thing. Um, you must have completed documentation of any previous FERF awards. So if you have received a further fund award, you must complete the thing you did <laughs> and then before applying for a new thing. And you have to provide us with documentation, which we'll, we'll get into in a few slides. So what is eligible? The um, further fund aims to be the most flexible source of project support at CMU. It can be used to help realize independent arts research and investigations, arts research and investigations that have additional sources of funding, that's totally fine, arts research projects with CMU or outside collaborators, undergraduate and graduate thesis projects, classwork, class projects, final projects, less commonly, enabling equipment, but sometimes commonly, weird but compelling side projects, and startup funding for independent collaboratives. Um, local, Deep Local came out of here. It wasn't a further fund grantee, but as an example of something that 
can start here and become an organization of people um, to continue making together. Um, the Frank Rachi Further Fund has supported the creation of performances, installations, books, software, films, games, product designs, community projects, interventions, workshops, exhibitions, and more. Documentation of funded projects can be found online on our website. And so that's a, a very good use a resource for all of you to see what has been funded. I'll just note here that our links are still a different acronym um, because we changed the name to the Further Fund this year and it, and it has an A in there. So um, we don't wanna break our links because they're all over the place. So you just have to deal with the A. <laughs> Um, the micro grants. So micro grants are awards that are $500 or under. So they can be $10 or $5 if, if that's what you need. Um, they are decided by the director, who is me, of the studio, um, which makes them a much faster process. Um, they're granted on a rolling basis within each semester while funding remains. They are not just for students. Microgrants are available to any person who is actively affiliated with CMU, whether student, faculty, or staff. You can look back at the eligibility of, um, in the previous slide. Uh, they are made available to assist projects that require modest support or which arise between scheduled cycles for major funding. Uh, they also exist to spur arts research investigations at their earliest and most fragile state, enabling rapid response research. Um, they're great for zapping excuses. The smallest grant ever was $10. And, and by excuses, I mean, you feel like you can't do something and you just need that one little thing to push you past the sense of impossibility. So, you know, I hope that the full grants also do that. And speaking of the full grants, for 2022-23, the program is offering award amounts $501 to $5,000. Um, they're available to any person actively affiliated with CMU, whether they are students, faculty, or staff, selected in two rounds in the fall and the spring per academic year. They are selected by a five member advisory jury. And that jury is comprised of studio director, the head of the School of Art, a CFA faculty not from art, a, C a CMU faculty member not from the C CFA and a non-CMU Pittsburgh arts professional. Um, so it, we try to run the gamut of, of different ways of looking at art making. The next deadline is Sunday, September 25th at 11.59 PM. So Monday morning, we'll be opening those gifts up. <laughs> um, the spring deadline, should that be more relevant for you, is February 12th, 2023. So consider that as well. Uh, the application is online. Again, it's a for FAF um, link, but also easy to find on our website. How are the awards selected? The further fund proposals are competitively evaluated based on the vision, originality, quality and potential impact of the proposed project, the professional artistic and or technical capabilities of the applicants, uh, the feasibility of the project, the proximity of need or the, the timeline, the potential impact of our support on the project and for the artists, the extent to which the proposed work pushes the envelope um, or takes risks, fulfilling the specific mission of the Further Fund grant program to support innovative interdisciplinary arts that challenge conventions. How competitive is the Further Fund? The Further Fund is an endowed grant program within an educational institution. For many, this is the first award on their CV. It's meant to be accessible but also model the challenges of outside grant programs. Because we aim to support as many people as possible, larger grants are more difficult to secure. It's comparatively easy to secure a $500 micro grant, for example, um, but it requires really good diligence to secure a $1,000 award. 
It's twice as difficult to secure 2000. It's twice as difficult on top of that to do get 3000 and you get the theme. It's more and more difficult as you go up the towards 5000. Um, the $5,000 grants, if, if we give them out, have to be compelling, impactful, and feasible. Um, and so, you know, there's a risk that the jury is assuming and saying, we will give this person $5,000 because we believe that this is going to happen, this is going to be impactful, and, you know, it is the best use of this money that we are stewarding. So that, that's, the, that's the litmus test right there. Um, because for for the jury, they're looking at several other applications of fantastic ideas, and they're thinking, well, this person could do this with one thousand dollars. So just consider that when you're writing your application. Um, who has received the further fund awards? So since 2013, there have been 452 grants, giving out around five hundred thousand five hundred. It might be exactly because it's. Five hundred thousand, five hundred eight thousand nine hundred seventy-eight dollars um, to faculty, graduate students, staff, undergraduates. Who's received these? Four hundred and thirty grants since 2013. Awardees from more than 20 departments. 47 percent have gone to School of Art. Using the word artworks, you know, we hope to see more proposals from throughout the university. Um, but you know, the School of Art has received. Quite a bit of support, and we we're fine with it. <laughs> we just want all of you who aren't in the School of Art to also apply. Um, so, how can the FERF awards be spent? Uh, purchasing purchasing supplies tax free, purchasing equipment which the awardee keeps, paying outside services contractors, consultants, and collaborators, hiring student assistants experimental subjects, et cetera, taxable activity payments to other CMU staff or faculty, so you can pay your collaborators and peers for their work, bringing guests or collaborators to CMU, business meals for teams, workshop food, exhibition hors d'oeuvres, expenses for travels when it is required to re realize the project, but what is not permitted is conference travel. So this isn't a grant that takes you to a conference. How can further fund awards be directly dispersed? Are we in your area yet? No, but I'm not okay. gonna take this over for the end. No, I'm, I'm fine. I just can't see my notes. Um, grants may be directly dispersed in any of the following three ways, including in combinations by direct pur purchases through the university's accounting system in which the studio or another departmental business am administration makes tax exempt purchases of supplies or equipment, et cetera, on the award's behalf. As reimbursements for expenses upon submission of valid receipts and justifications. Um, and for students only, the option also exists to receive a check made out to the awardee or um, an electronic bank, bank transfer. Um, just please know that this could be taxable, taxable income for you um, because it's, it's a non-qualified scholarship, um, but it can go right into your bank account. How else does the studio support FERF projects? The studio provides a very wide range of custom support to grantees. Um, assisting on a case by case basis with things like business management, purchasing, payroll, travel arrangements, creation of business contracts. Um, contracts is a huge one that we help with, compliance with CMU processes. So, navigating what can I do? Who should I talk to? Where are they? Um, am I allowed to put this here? Uh, assistance in your project's next steps. So advice on grant writing, fundraising, marketing, and public relations, introductions or access to local and remote expertise, networking across the spectrum of folks that you know, come to the studio and are affiliated with the studio, um, providing or reserving space and loans of special equipment, 
other assistants, like program coordinators, staff videographers. Um, we, we hire a lot of students here that can also work on your projects um, that are extremely skilled human beings. Um, what's the FERF grant process? What is it? It's not that complicated, so <laughs> don't be scared of it. Uh, the first thing that you want to do with a FERF grant process, once you've decided that you have a project that you're interested in finding some funding for, some support for, but you don't necessarily know how to start writing your grant, the first thing you want to do is reach out to me. Again, my name is Harrison Apple. You can find my information on the website, but it's also CMU, so you can type my name into Google and you'll have like all of my vitals. Um, so you want to make an appointment with me. I have a public calendar that's available on the FERF website, um, but you can also find it in my email signature. And we'll usually talk for about 15 to 30 minutes about your project. I will listen to you for understanding what it is that you want to do. What's the impact that you want to have? What is the boundary pushing aspect of this kind of grant that you want to do? And I will give you advice on how to actually write your grant. You can come to me with the question of, I have no idea how to write a grant proposal. I've never done this in my life. Can you please make this feel less impossible? That's exactly what I'm here to do with you. We'll do it in person over Zoom, or you can send me a bunch of your materials via email and I will respond to you at the you know, soonest convenience and to the best of my ability. But I highly, highly recommend that you reach out to me. Um, oftentimes people wait to the last minute to submit these. They do it on their own and they're confused by the language of a question, or they haven't considered the fact that they need a line item budget. These are things that I can help you construct. It's not just a matter of me listening and deciding, hmm, am I gonna get, keep this person? I don't know. Uh, it's not what we're here to do. So for the rest of this, um, you need to, if you are a student applicant, secure a letter of recommendation from a faculty advisor. Now, this is actually a lot less uh, work than a normal letter of recommendation. You need a faculty advisor on your project and they will be given a link by you. It's available in the grant application um, and on the website to basically have them say, yes, I endorse this project. Yes, I believe the student is capable of producing it. That's all we really need to make sure is that this person is actively advising you. You're not being put out to see by yourself and you know, let's see if you can figure it out on your own. Um, that is not required for staff applicants. That is not required for faculty applicants. So you will submit your online application. The portal is on the website. Again, feel free to reach out to me directly if you have any issue or confusion with that. And uh, following the deadline, we are assembling a large packet which goes to the jury, which Nika described in detail before, and will also be available on these slides and in the recording. And those people are going to review all of these applications together. The number of applications is a little unpredictable. Last spring, we had more than we have ever received before. There were 33 in one round, and it is brutal for them to put these decisions together. So they really take their time. You'll usually hear back within about two weeks um, to three weeks of the deadline of when you're going to know if you were awarded this um, material, I will be the person who sends you that email. I, I think the jury is, if you need to know the timeline, I believe the jury is meeting the week of October 10th is the date that I'm having in my head. So after that week, the the we should notify everyone. Right. And I, I do notify people as soon as the jury's decision has been made. So you'll get an email that day sometime at the end of the week of October 10th informing you of if you were awarded how much um, and any other pertinent information. Sometimes awards are applied for and the jury looks at this and says we have another option for you and we'd like you to consider it. So um, once you've received that award notification, if you've been awarded a FERF grant, you're going to want to, as soon as possible, schedule a meeting with our business manager, Linda Hager. She is the person who is going to make it possible, you, possible for you to either receive or spend that money, and she is your best friend in this process. You do not want to wait on this, especially if you need to pay anybody. CMU's hiring system, even just for contractors, even if they're CMU affiliates, takes almost two weeks to get someone in the system and another two weeks after the labor is done to get that money out to them. And depending if it's a written check or a direct deposit, it can take even longer. So this is the kind of bureaucracy that we're trying to help you wayfind. This is not something that we have direct control over changing, but we can give you our best advice on how to make it painless or at very least pretty close. <laughs> so after some time of having been um, notified of your award, working with Linda Hager, I'm the person who wants to keep in touch with you on the progress of your project. I want to know if you're running into logistical issues. I want to know if there's been pivots to the design of your project based on uncontrollable external factors. I'm here for you as your support system, and you don't have to panic if something changes and you need to you know, augment your direction. 
it's more important to me that you stay in contact with us. And then very, very importantly, and really our final thing here is that when you complete your project, you need to produce documentation and send it to us. Um, it's part of the agreement that you sign as a contract with the FERC agreement, but also it goes into our online archives. It allows us to promote your work. It makes you findable on the web when people are trying to figure out who you are when you're looking for other opportunities. I hope that you want to brag about receiving a FERC grant because it's very cool to have a, a grant funded project right out of undergrad or even in your graduate program showing that your home institution is actively supporting the work that you're there to do the research that you're there to do or it's faculty and staff getting awards also it's, great it's awesome brag about it brag about it and i'm not asking you for a lot <laughs> if any of you remember online education from the pandemic period i used to teach online quite a bit 250 words it's that magic number when you're doing an online discussion board response <laughs> that's all i want from you i want a solid paragraph i want some pictures i want some video if available but i just want to know that it happened this is a very fixer it didn't happen situation. Can I add one little thing? Yeah. You will have we we are going to host this on our website. You will be Googleable on our website. Give us good documentation. Mm. We want to hype you. We are proud of you. We want to show the best things that you've ever done. So please don't think of it as like, oh God, I gotta just send that thing. They're bothering me. Like please like give us a good representation. Like think about how you wanna represent your work on our website. And so that we can do, do the best to hype you. Exactly. We are your hype men, we are here to do it. That's what we do. Um, something that we needed to also address during this info session for the first time, I think, is that if you are unable to start spending your grant money within a year of having been awarded it, we need to have a discussion about timeline changes and about receiving approval from the studio's director because this is sort of like an allotment to you this this grant money which is similar for most foundations and organizations and at a certain point we have to know whether or not this money can be put back into a distribution fund to go to other students faculty and staff who are anxious to support their work and um yeah it's just a matter of staying in communication you know don't disappear from us. we don't want money to stagnate we want to move it we want to make things we don't want to hold on to it so if you haven't been able to spend it you just have to talk to us it's not that we're gonna say you don't get any of it you just have to let us know what's going on what's in the way you know what's the timeline for when your project's gonna start if, if and and especially like if your affiliation with cmu is changing or anything like that we need to be in the know about what the plan is yeah, this is also the reason that we have requirements like giving us a non CMU email address in addition to that. Yes, one, so we please. Can keep in touch with you a phone number music to my ears love. But ultimately, the, the, you know, digest of this slide is money is like manure, we want to spread it around. Yes. So let's go to the next one. So minimum and maximum funding requests, this might seem like the technical boring part of your application. I'm here to tell you it's incredibly important and I will help you work through this. So the reason that we ask for a minimum and maximum is that when the jury is looking at a huge slew of applications, they're looking at not just if they can support you, but how they can support you. And they have a finite amount of funds that they can push around. So they may come back to you with saying, we would love to support this project and we can give you just short of the gigantic maximum that you gave us. Or you give them the option to say, if it is impossible for us to get anywhere near your top ask, we know that you can succeed with a different scaled version of this project or we know that you are able to work with a smaller amount of funding and you might have co-sponsorship or complementary funding from another source. So think of this as your opportunity to have submitted a couple different versions of your proposal. One that gives you basically more tickets in the lottery to say, not a lottery, that's way too random, but more, more points at which you can say like, I have multiple ways of doing this. If I can't, if there's no way that anyone here is getting $4,000 today, I can work with two, I can work with one. We have a question in the room. Exactly. So it's a narrative entry here. Um, and you'll also have uh, room to submit your you know, Excel sheet version, but you can write materials into there. I'm going to be looking at every piece of everyone's application and also pointing things out to the jury when you make it clear to me. So I can say like, hey, a really important point. This person wants you to know that if they receive this amount of money, the project looks like this. And so in the actual application, you'll see the short answer text information. That's where you can write 
my minimum is X and let me tell you why and what you're going to get out of that. And here's my maximum and it's a totally different world. Please choose this number. And you submit a, and you submit a budget. So on that budget, you, you can get narrative, you know, like giving us information, you know, some, something that I find really helpful is also narration around feasibility, what's secured, what's not secured, you know, what are backup plans for these, you know, costs, like, call the person ask them how much it is you know like get, get that information that will help make your project seem more feasible to the jury and just to reiterate in the meetings that i've already had with um upcoming applicants this is something that we talk about back and forth so if you're not sure how you want to phrase this if you need help explaining this in writing i am here for you to help you with that all right and on my calendar, you'll see that there's a select number of appointments available. If none of those work for you, send me an email anyway. Say, hey, can you work with this time? And I can usually do it. Next. Next one. What if my application is rejected? Womp womp. It does happen. There's too many of you. <laughs> please, please, please apply again. Um, the reason that we say this is that our jury usually consists of people who like to do this over and over, and it means that they will remember you. And if nothing else, I will remember you. And the I'll be there. Nick is going to remember you. <laughs> um, and uh, that means that you have the chance to say, hey, I applied for this before and I wasn't selected. Um, you also will receive justification from me about why your application maybe was not selected. I usually can't narrow it down to one for, uh, one choice because there's five people involved in this decision and I, I do not vote myself. So it's not something that I have done. But um, this gives you the chance to demonstrate how you've grown, how you've changed the application, if you've responded to the jury's feedback, which you will receive. And, um, and also it gives you a chance to say, um, that's all right, don't panic. <laughs> um, it gives you the chance to say like, uh, you know, I'm sort of waiting in line for this. You know, they know that you're somebody who's dedicated to using this award in a way that's really exciting. So um, you're not hitting up against a brick wall. I really encourage you to apply again, even as yes. soon as the next cycle. And it also says, I really, I'm really going to do this. Like, I, I, I want to do this, you know? Um, yeah, yeah, you have the rest. And so just to go over a couple of things that have been pointed out by jury members as to why they would not select a project for um, funding. Some of it's if it's not very well explained, usually this is the case of somebody who wrote their application last minute. It's maybe overwritten, underwritten. They didn't get a chance to meet with me and ask questions about whether or not this makes sense. Um, believe it or not, you do have to make sense to tell somebody what it is you want to make and why. And um, sometimes the project is not obviously researched. Now, I don't know that we've stressed this quite enough, but this is a creative research grant, which means that this is not simply to provide funding to finish a thing that's already done, that you know what it means, that you know where it's going. This is an experimental process. This is about finding new kinds of knowledge. This is about pushing boundaries of your discipline. So if you can't explain why this is a research process for you, the jury is going to be less interested in funding it for this particular award. Every award has a letter attached to it that tells us how we can spend it. This is the crux of this one. That and no conference travel. I don't know why they picked that, but I wasn't here when the letter was written. Um, the other and often an issue is a logistical issue. If the jury's not convinced that this is actually a feasible project, if you tell this person that you are about to fly to the moon and you have no means of doing that, they are not going to award you that kind of money. Um, and that can be at many different scales. So make sure in your biographical information, in your work samples, in your budget line items, that you have a plan for how you are going to accomplish what it is you're proposing to do. It's just not that difficult to put together. And if you are struggling at all, again, reach out to me. Um, sometimes people are requesting funds that are simply too competitive. Reaching for $5,000 as an individual is not uh, giving you a lot of statistical chance of being selected. A lot of grants that end up at that complete end of the bracket, they are large collaborations between multiple people, or at very least a lot of stakeholders. The impact is going to be immense, therefore it requires immense funding, at least at the scale of our award. So as you're putting this thing together, as you're planning to meet with me, really let me know what it is you think is your maximum budget, why it needs to be that amount, and what we can think of as a way of demonstrating multiple versions. We have another question in the room. Yeah. Yeah, so we, the question, the question is, did I not do that last time? Right? Yeah. I think I did. It was yeah. contextual. So um, one of the things that we're being asked is if people apply for a grant that is at a high end of the bracket and um, 
is going to involve multiple collaborators or stakeholders, but we don't yet know for sure who those exact individuals are. And that does happen. I mean, to the question of feasibility, it is to your benefit to know as many of those people, or at very least demonstrate contact with the community, a relationship with the people yeah. you're planning to work with, because that's going to be something that we can't let be completely up to chance. But it, it has happened in the past. I want to think of a couple of examples, but do you have one? Yeah, I mean, I think that proof that the, you've done this before um, would go a long way that that in finding people, you know, to work with. I, I am imagining also like kind of working with a community as the context that I know. Um, proving that there is a process that um, that that there's a connection. Um, just, you know, convincing a group of people you don't know that you can do that is, is the primary test in all of this. Um, it, yeah. Yeah, and I, I'm happy to, you know, sort of um, harmlessly use myself as an example. When I was an undergraduate at Carnegie Mellon, I had a FERFAF at the time named FERFAF Award. Um, for an exhibition I was doing about after hours gay and lesbian nightclub photography. And I was able to demonstrate to them, these are the people I've done my oral history interviews with. These are the people to whom the project materials belong to. This is their sign off on wanting to be a part of this publicity focused kind of event. So we're looking for a demonstration of good faith contact and knowledge of the people you plan to work with, not simply an aspirational connection to people who you don't yet know. I, I also will say there's also just a, a logistical thing that I, I do understand for people who are applying for grants and ha haven't secured that funding that it's like, well, I can't tell this person, like convince this person to work with me until I have money to pay them. So you can say people such as blah, 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 you know, um, in your application. And I have also received a further fund before I was director and I had that in my application that I wanted to work with grap gender nonconforming grapplers. And I said, such as black belt Sean Tamari Bucci. I hadn't asked Sean if they were wanted to roll with me, but I I did they did. They said yes. But then once I had the money and I said, I've been rewarded this money, I'd like to work with you. It was the opening of that door. So we understand that you might need an award to open that door, but tell us what your plans are, who you plan to approach. Excellent. I mean, I think that that's gonna cover most of our questions about why an application might not be selected, but again, we'll have time for questions at the end. I should say more time. You are very yes. welcome to ask questions in the meantime. Um, all right, so repeat funding policies, this is important. We do love it when people get more than one award from the studio, but there are some rules that come along with this. So you can't be the lead applicant on two active projects from the further fund. What that means is that you can't be the primary investigator, the person who has submitted the application, but you can be a collaborator on one that overlaps with yours. So if that is a strategy that people have used successfully and we welcome it. It's not considered particularly shady. I just wanna make a request from our business manager, that if you are the principal investigator, you are the person that interacts with our business manager, Linda, so if you have collaborators or you are a collaborator on another project, the PI, like she has so many projects going in front of her and she really does connect with you as a person, as an investigator, and she wants to hear from you about your project because that's her context. So, you know, when you're working with a large group, think about who's the person who talks to Linda. <laughs> so just keep that consistent for her. Yeah, and, and to drive that home, if you're paying anybody, make sure only one person talks to Linda. You do not want that kind of information getting confused or people get very, very angry and yeah. they have every right to be. So um, another thing is if you're applying for a second FERF grant, you need to have documentation from any prior awards submitted to the studio. Um, if you haven't done that, it just doesn't give us a good sense of confidence that you're going to do this in the future. It doesn't convince us that the project has been done to the agreement. Um, it's a matter of good faith. Um, the jury may also evaluate documentation of your prior projects. So to drive home the point of before about not just sending us any documentation, but sending us your absolute best, because if they see things that you've submitted and everybody just has that groan, 
you know, they're going to remember this. They will remember you. Um, so again, put your best foot forward with your documentation and reach out to us if you are confused about how to best document something. Oftentimes with creative research, people are doing processes that don't have, you know, an endless forum of suggestions on how to capture. But experimental capture is taught in the studio. You have incredible- We have ideas and experience. <laughs> incredible people here who have done weird, strange things and would be happy to share that knowledge with you. Yes. Can we move to the uh, repeat too? Yes, there's more. Um, no project may be funded by the FERF twice, or sorry, more than twice. Yeah. And um, what that means is that you can apply for an award for a particular project. And if that happens to grow into a further form of research that you know is you know, imminent, you can apply again um, after uh, one academic year. And that will allow you to further that research, but that's the limit of what we can do. Now, there is a fine print exception to this. Sometimes, and this comes back to the narrative that I was sort of spinning for you about when a jury might offer you something different from what you've asked for. If a jury sees a project and it's really ambitious and they think that you have most of what you need to do it, but they're not convinced of the feasibility, they might come back to you and say, how would you like to try out with a micro grant or a smaller amount and develop something that can work like a proof of concept that you don't quite have yet? And that would allow you to then, even in the same academic year, apply for a full grant in the next cycle and be able to receive further funding to do this to its full extent. And then, because of what I had just mentioned above, if you see this creative research continuing to grow, you could then be eligible for a second full grant. So this means, in the extremely rare exception of this very narrow form, you could technically get three. Um, but that's where the, uh, the well really runs dry. And at that point, we're going to start pushing you to look at different kinds of endowments, different kinds yeah, of grants, yeah. because you're proving that you are outgrowing <laughs> the capacity of the studio uh, for the size of this project. And we're happy to also help you with directing you to the people at CMU who can help you with that material. Maybe that's the Office of Sponsored Projects. Maybe that's the Creative Research Office with Jen Joy Wilson. They're all incredible people. And this is sort of a stepping stone to get there. Ah, white noise went away. Um, okay, so do projects fail? Of course, it wouldn't be research if there was no chance of failure. So um, here's some statistics about failure. As you can see, it's it's low percentages. Um, and and what we're talking about when we say fail um, in this specific context, because I'm sure that you know all of us have gone to a dark place and felt like we failed. But we're talking about um, Funds not used, they they were returned. Um, again, if something is not going forward and not being used, know that those funds will be used. So it is okay to tell us like, hey, I'm not using this, please throw this in the bucket. Cause that's, that's another project that will move forward. And it's good for us to know. There's also a handful of projects that failed outright. So they were, the money was spent, something was tried and the results were not as expected. And, you know, they they didn't want it on our website. <laughs> they didn't want us to hype the results. It happens. Um, some uh, more are projects that have to adapt. And especially we saw this during the initial lockdowns and, and the changes of circumstances surrounding projects that received awards before those constraints change. Um, we just ask that you talk to us um, and, and specifically you can talk to Harrison or me. Um, you, you will probably have to talk to me if there's major changes that I have to approve. Um, basically, the thing to know is that the funds can't be moved into a different non-jury reviewed project. So uh, for example, and this happens, you, you were awarded $2,000 and you spent $1,750. And then you say, hey, I could really use that other few dollars on this other project I'm doing. No, that wasn't that wasn't approved by the jury. So, you know, you can apply for a micro grant for that other project after submitting your documentation, but you have to re you have to say, I relinquish those funds. They go back into the pot. Um, so what other sources of funding are available? So here at the studio, um, we have the Steiner Visitor Invitation Grants. Um, and I will say when we're reviewing applications, we do look at the applications and some of them were like, hey, this is a Steiner, you know, or this, okay, this I'm going to fund out of the director's fund. 
Um, the Steiner is for bringing guests from outside of CMU to have contact with students. And so if what you are planning and proposing to do involves a workshop, a lecture, bringing people here, and there's contact, direct contact with students, then consider the Steiner. Um, it is more flexible than just um, airfare, for example, and hotel, though it, that's primarily what it ends up covering for when people come. Um, it also pays the people. Uh, the director's fund, the director's fund is um, a non-endowed resource that we have that is, you know, where donations, one-time donations go. So it's it doesn't have the same um, uh, refilling capacity that, that the the FERF and the Steiner have. So we're more careful with that. Um, but it's used to support projects in need that fall outside of the intentions and the, and the gift agreements of the FERF and the Steiner. So you know sometimes we think, see things come through that are great ideas that actually don't follow all the rules that we're following on our gifts. So we approach them with the director's fund. It's not, it's not an application-based process because we don't have a, a, a constantly renewing fountain of money. So we, we can't say, oh, we know we're gonna always have this amount of money to give. Um, what other sources of funding are available? Well, for students, there are many. There's Surge, Surge Crosswalk, I surge the Henry Armo, Armero BXA award, um, gush, gush crosswalk, CFA fund for research and creativity. I will say in my own experience, I received two um, further fund awards and then finished my project with the CFA fund for research and creativity. Um, that is out of Jen Joy Wilson's office of sponsored projects in the CFA. Um, there's the Simon Innovative Grants, um, that's through Everly, the Mellon Foundation Seed Grants, also through Everly, the OLR Art Supply. And something that also we should add to this list is CAS also has a series of um, grants that are very um, topic specific that comes out, I think every other year? I believe it's a three year cycle. Or every three years. So that's something to watch out for. Can I ask yeah, please. So, and just a nice reminder from our business manager, Linda Hager, who's joining us in broadband. Um, had said that as a reminder, Steiner funds can be combined with funds from other departments. So if you want to bring somebody and the Steiner can only afford you part of yes. the award, don't be shy about asking the business manager, director, head of your department, friends of other departments, initiatives, units, say, hey, would you be willing to co-sponsor this? Can you throw in $50? Can you throw in $500? And that can turn something that would once be a Zoom lecture into an in-person workshop and three-day, you know, student-facing experience. Yes. Yeah, I love big ideas and I love being approached with big ideas and I love um, people who want to bring, you know, workshops, screenings, you know, outside of the box, um, outside of the registrar ideas here. And so please feel free to talk about that. And, you know, we can reach across the campus with collaborators and friends to make those things happen. And we've done that with a friend in the room. <laughs> Um, so find out more, apply, look at our website, look at documentation about projects, talk to us, um, email us, all of those good things. Um, and we're going to leave the rest of the space for questions from either people on Zoom. If you have a question on Zoom, you can chat or unmute or raise your hand. We're lo looking at you. Or if you're here in this room, just uh, raise your hand and shout at us. Yeah. Yeah, so just to repeat the question for Zoom, the question is like, who are these advisors? Um, when, I, when I say advisor, I mean someone who is in conversation with you about the project you're working on. Um, and so that could be a professor, it could be a staff member, um, CMU affiliated. I, what ends up happening is that um, the, the capacity for the studio to be immediately responsive to you about your project is not as um, mighty as I wish it was, you know, like I, I wish I could talk to you about it every single day. So I also want to know that you have another person who is um, skilled 
at advising you on what you're making because you're in an edu educational institution. That's what we're here for. I'm always excited to talk to everyone about their projects, but I, I don't want to feel bad when I say, oh, I got to go to this. I'm so sorry. So we have one question coming in on Zoom uh, from Geneva Skeen in the School of Art asking about work samples for the application. Uh, she's asking, will jury review videos for time-based work? I'm guessing if I link it to a, a video in the PDF that I submit, it'll be okay, but I want to confirm. And that is absolutely true. Um, the jury receives a digital packet, which they all have independent access to, and you can include time-based media. I recommend using stable links rather than files because it means that you have to cram less material into one package and also less of a chance for corruption. Um, I will say that it's important to consider um how long that media yes. is you want to make sure that somebody has the time to look at your materials given that they might be looking at 30 more people's applications so don't send them a 10 minute video you know that's going to be quite a lot of time for them to be looking at you know consider the real consider editing something that really highlights what it is you're trying to create yeah and you know you can include like if you put it on youtube um and you send a link that has a time code on it for us to start at but you still are showing us the one hour thing you made. Um, but you're telling us start here if, you, if you've only got five minutes or a minute, but you are still giving us the avail uh, availability of the entire piece so that we could watch it. And, and that's a good thing. I mean, if you, if you want to select just a one minute and send us a one minute clip, that's up to you. But you know, it, it is also a, a nice feature to tell us what time code to start at and let us poke around further. Yeah. Uh, is your OLR selected for Yes. So um, I was provided this information by a student that said that the OLR um, art supply is, is underutilized for undergrads and to spread the word. So I am actively spreading the word. Okay, I, there's a QR code I was provided that I can get, I can show you afterwards. Um, I should put it up on the screen. I'm going to try and put it up on the screen if somebody wants to ask Harrison a question. Great, and I will add um, about the OLR grants that I also heard from that student that um, you're not limited to one award um, or rather one support. It's um, per class. So you know the idea is you reach the end of the course and you have a bunch of requirements and they're costing money that you don't have. This can help you out. I believe the program's only a year old as well, so um they shouldn't be uh hard to reach out to there should be somebody actively in charge we have another question in the room ah okay so on our website on the left hand side you'll see um, a navigation menu that says grants I'm trying to edit this live. <laughs> I see. The live coding to my left um, will reach us in just a moment, but under grants, you should see the Frank Ratchie Further Fund, and there is um, an overview section that will describe the um, basically the structure of the application, and there's also a guidelines link underneath. You'll also find there links for how to submit your documentation, links to book an appointment with myself, um, and of course, a gigantic green button that links you to the application. I'm showing it right now. Oh, great. Oh, I love it. Well, I didn't know how to do what I was trying to do. Um, this is where you'll also be able to find information that you want to reference regularly. Like, oh my God, what is the deadline again? And is it on a Sunday? Why is it on a Sunday? Why is it at midnight? Um, okay. I can answer those questions for you. It's arbitrary. And, um, <laughs> but we want to give our jury a full week of time to review these materials before they actually start making decisions about them. That's to your benefit as much as ours. To be honest, if you submit it to 2 a.m., you know, it's like Har when Harrison wakes up and comes into the office on Monday, it should be there. <laughs> we could make it like a 7 a.m. deadline. I don't know. I'd like to encourage people to not turn it in the day that I that is after the deadline. No. A, a deadline has to be chosen, right? Yes. You can push it forever. But and if I'm going to start good. actively creating this jury packet, I would like it to be in by the end of the 25th. Please do me that favor. If you are desperate, if you need to plead at the door of the studio, please don't. Just send me an email and explain. Um, but it should be it should be with me by the morning of the twenty sixth at the absolute latest. I'm live editing and trying to navigate, and I'm gonna 
to do we have another question in the room that we have two okay we'll start with Imbar. Oh, the advisor form is included um, in the application itself, uh, as well as it should be on the website. Um, and uh, I'm happy to put together a little supplementary host of links today and send them to you all as a group or individually. Um, okay. It's a really simple form. It's a Google form. Your advisor basically checks a box, writes a sentence and says, yep, they are not lying. I support this. Another question in the room? Out of the entire pool. Out of the entire pool, yeah, the larger project. We don't have a consistent percentage on that, right? No, I can say that. Um, you know, I took a lot of the data viz out of this presentation, to be honest, um, because it 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 represented a time before me as director. Um, so that that time is shifting and and I am I am a new player in the room. So what I will say is that we're basically trying to aim around twenty five thousand dollars and divide it across as many feasible, possible, intentional projects that fulfill the requirements of the gift as possible um while also not saying well all of you get one dollar and you all are like wow great thanks i guess i have to put your logo on my website now <laughs> you know so we're trying to give you the funds you need um but also one thing i'll just say is that you know if a if a application comes in um that and I don't mean to say this in a discouraging way, because I, I feel like you should apply and you should save this application and know that like sometimes we'll specifically say like, please apply again, because somebody applied and they're like, if I don't capture this one, you know, full moon on this date, you know, th then I, it will never happen again. And, you know, and we're like, oh God, we were looking at these two fantastic proposals and, and we're looking at all the other, you know, like we're piecing out all these $1,000 proposals and we have these two $5,000 grants and we just can't fund them both, but both of them truly need that amount to be realized. And this other person could apply in the spring and get it, you know, and, and we just have to prioritize this full moon, you know? So there's feedback like that, that, that will come to you as well. Yes. Hi, and a couple of specific little bullet point things you wanted to ask them. Um, so you, as a PI, are affiliated with PMG, but your collaborators on this, do they also need to be affiliated with PMG? So the question is if um, if you're affiliated with CMU, if your collaborators also need to be, no. Um, and then for the students, workers, like you know, the project collaborators or like documentation software, et cetera, um, are the funds that give the students the funds that come out of your grant or are they sort of separate or study? that really so the question is if funds going to student work um, comes out of your grant or from work study i would say that depends on your affiliation depends on the support that you're getting from your school or your unit um you know i i think it totally depends on what um resources you have that can support your research within your your home unit um and I think that's a good question to ask because your research should be supported by your unit. Um, and you know, you can pay students through your grant. You can definitely do that. But also, you know, how how you situate your own research and your own practice within um, your teaching practice or or your you know staff, also educational teaching practice is up to you and your school. And it's cool to be supported. Yes. Okay. 
If you're, if you're sorry, if the question is. Yes. No, the micro grant is rolling. So the question is if if the micro grants are September 25th. No, you can submit a micro grant application. It's the same form. Um, you just don't fill out this like min max, you know, in it it's the same form though. And and you just say, I need this much money, and it is below five hundred dollars. Um, and that you can submit at any time. We do our best to look at those quickly and respond quickly. Yeah. Any other questions? Chat, um, not currently. Okay. Yeah. Stefan. Totally. Stefan Casper has offered himself as an advisor to stray <laughs> stray students. <laughs> you know when you say it. This is recorded. <laughs> uh, he currently works. In... <laughs> His phone number is the Kenner Global <laughs> Digital Narrative and no, Storytelling. Actually, room. that's a very awesome offer and um stefan is a great advisor to have so i suggest you all take him up on this offer yeah just remember that you will have to actively advise all of these <laughs> you used to work for the bbc but these people are very demanding yeah, yeah no it's they're it's so great what people are doing and I mean, I just want to say I'm really grateful for all of you coming and I'm really grateful for you applying um, and I'm I'm so grateful for your wild ideas and I want more of them um, and I want you to bring your friends and I want you to get wilder so um, I hope that this is an encouraging info session and not a oh God all the boxes I have to check info session. Yeah, was there any more questions. Go for it. Okay. Yeah. You can hang out in here. The question is who can hang out in here? You can hang out in here. So we um, try to keep our public calendar, which I will click on. It is right here. We're going to try and make it more obvious, but it's right here. And you click on it, and it will show you when our studios open and close and the events and things like that and it will get more and more occupied with information as we move forward um but basically we're a somewhat nine to five operation we do have after hours studio hours that will get up on this calendar um like for tonight we have a studio monitor till 10 p.m tonight um so this is a space that creative researchers are welcome um and you know, it is a great place where intersections can be made uh, of like, what are you doing? You know, um, so that that's something we encourage you to to come and participate in. We also have tons of events um, and workshops and make sure that you click on uh, this and write your CMU email address. There's some emails that we send internally. I am guilty of this myself. I put my personal email address because I, I have compartmentalization issues, but um, I suggest you put your CMU email address because for instance, this info session was email blasted to CMU email addresses because this is for CMU um, associated folks. We do our best to reach out to all your schools and all your everything. Um, we do that outreach, but sometimes that little bit of information doesn't get to you um, because there's other inf bits of information. So sign up for our email um, blast and you'll know what our events are, what our grants are. Um, you know, We are actively looking at different ways to support creative researchers. Um, so we hope to announce more and more things. Yeah. But we teach in here Tuesday, Thursday afternoons this, this semester. We also have a, I should plug this, 
Um, we also have an opportunity to teach in this space. Um, and so we are opening up the doors to other teachers um, for one class to be hosted every semester um, that is co-taught by two teachers who do not teach in the same exact school or the same exact topic. So um, intentional interdisciplinary courses. Um, we are flexible in how you manage that, um, but one of the faculty members has to be a CFA faculty member. Um, we also have really great um, opportunities of having visiting artists that are embedded in your class or perhaps teaching alongside you. Um, so, you know, we want to foster more and more thinking outside of the disciplines um, and more and more um, intersections between all of us. Um, so consider talking about that with faculty members, being a faculty member who applies for that. Um, we will have one in, in the next semester, one in the spring, one in the fall following that. Um, and so that's um, the deadline for that is September 15th for the spring due to the registration schedule of classes needs. Um, but then you can apply after that for the fall. So if you want more info with that, um, let me know. Yeah, and just as a um, point, unusually, Nika is going to be the point of contact for co-teaching applications yes. as opposed to myself. I will just Perf. redirect you, but just so you know, faster that way. Yes. All right, well, we're coming up on 536. If there's no more questions, please feel free to reach out to us via email or to come by the studio sometime during the week. And one of us will be happy to talk to you. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.